Stand and turn and face across. This is a good day to worship the Lord on this Epiphany Sunday. Open up that bulletin. We have a, a little chorus that we'll begin this Epiphany Sunday worship with. Welcome to worship. Uh, as I said, we're in the midst of Epiphany, the season of light. That's why we got that uh, Olympic torch going on up there, as if uh, to give you that idea that there's light, as if these candles and everything else weren't enough. So uh, you can't have too much fire in any sanctuary. We um, and uh, this is one of my uh, favorite Sundays of the church year. Actually, uh, it's our commitment Sunday, where we get to make our promises for our financial giving for the year. Uh, so that's a that's a great celebration too. Uh, let's sing. We'll start with him, 303. the liturgy for this worship service in your bulletin. 
And we always begin with this apostolic reading. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We'll hear our scripture read now. from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jo jo Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sack sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first book of Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. I speak to God. Band and celebrate and sing the Gospels here. according to St. Mark. 
Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in this good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in the lake, and they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets, and they followed Jesus. And as he went a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. And immediately he called to them and said, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and they followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I, uh, I, I tell my friends that I won the, uh, the church lottery when you people called me uh, to be your pastor uh, back in 2003. This is, uh, uh, it'll be, I'll start my 13th year um, in, in ministry with you uh, here in 2015. So that's just a really a great thing. And, uh, and, and, and the, reason, the reason I feel very fortunate to be part of uh, Messiah is that um, it's a healthy place. It's just simply a healthy place, and it was a healthy place before I got here, and it continues to be a healthy place. And, uh, one way you can tell the health of a church is worship, um, is people's dedication to, uh, to worship. You can, um, uh, the trend in, in America is that, uh, not just in Lutheran churches, but in all Christian denominations, is that worship attendance is going down. And, um, and by these pews this morning, it, it looks like it might be true here. Uh, and, and, and there's all sorts of reasons for that, right? Uh, worship uh, people, um, leaders aren't doing a good job putting together worship services that speak to people. Uh, uh, worship isn't relevant to people's lives. Um, uh, Sunday mornings are a lot more competitive uh, for our time than they ever used to be before. Uh, but actually, uh, all those things are true, but yet Messiah is bucking the trend. In fact, we had worship growth in our... Uh, in our services last year, as we've had most every year. In 2003, we had 275 a Sunday on average in worship, and this year we ended at 387 on Sunday in, in worship. No one's going to write a book about us or put us on the cover of the Lutheran or anything like that. But it's a, but it's a sign that, that, uh, that there's something going on here that's good and, and, and that we should want to be a part of. And, and you don't have to go far to figure out what that is. You could just go online and, and look at the calendar online and see that there's just a lot happening in, in the life of this church. Just this building that we all pay for together gets used all the time. It, it's rare for me to go home on a Sunday afternoon and not have some shower or first birthday or something being set up in the fellowship hall. Or as last week, we had a wonderful worship service with our Catholic brothers and sisters uh, that was being set up when I left last week that started at 2.30. At 4.30, we got a real small, intimate worship service that happens for people that can't make Sunday morning. Uh, five, or 5.30, we got confirmation kids, uh, our largest classes that we've had in decades uh, that come in uh, a couple times a week. Uh, and then at 6.30, the high school kids come in, about 20 high school kids come in for that. And then you come back Monday morning, and there's like five volunteers that are here every week uh, taking care of the banking of this church before the building ever gets opened. You know, something you never think about, but there's people that, that, that do that for us. Uh, all of our kids start showing up for preschool. Our preschool is near capacity uh, this year. And, uh, and then at lunchtime tomorrow, you'll have the seniors in one of our halls, and you'll have the preschool kids eating lunch in another one of the halls. All morning long, the staff is planning worship. We have the music staff that comes in for that. You get into the evening, and 6.30, the bell choir practices uh, on Monday nights. And then uh, at 7 o'clock, I'm usually leading some group of leaders uh, on, on some sort of uh, uh, purposeful meeting that, that we have about the ministry of this church. Another room has uh, people volunteering that are putting something together for the month ahead. And if you have not been in this place in the evenings, on Mondays or Tuesdays, 
or Thursdays, it is full of kids and adults because we have all sorts of scouts that meet here now. And, and, and they are in the basement, in the halls, they're, they're, they're everywhere. And that's just Monday. I could, I could do this all day, right? But just look at one room in this place, one room. Look at the kitchen. Uh, that kitchen gets used more, more than I ever thought it would get used. It, it, we make lunches for all the preschool kids, and, and every week we make a meal for about 150 people. Uh, our people, we have a fellowship meal here Wednesday nights at 5.30. Uh, but then beyond that, we make a meal every week for one of the shelters that we serve at. Last week was really weird because we made three different meals for three different places. We made a meal for the Y Family Shelter, for the Faith on Eighth Shelter, and for the Ronald McDonald House. All during that week, over 500 people were served out of that kitchen, and volunteers then took those meals and served them to the people that needed them. And then you look at that kitchen, just how it's used throughout the year, right? I mean, there's breakfast with the uh, Santa. There, there's the Valentine's dinner that we're talking about now that our youth do. There's the chicken noodle dinner that uh, is going to support Heart Food Pantry this year. There's the Easter bunny breakfast. There's the Easter morning breakfast. There's the rally day picnic. There's the harvest meal. There's the community spaghetti dinners. That place is busy. <laughs> that place is just busy. Thousands of people are eating out of that kitchen every year. It, it just boggles my mind. And, and, and the building is alive. I mean, people are using the space. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, people, you people, use it for birthdays and anniversaries and reunions. In fact, um, I was with a family uh, a few weeks ago, and they were telling me that they don't go here. And they were telling me about this great reunion they do every Christmas where they have about a hundred family members that come in and they got Santa and everything else and it's really sounded fun and cool and and they rent a hall and I, I go why do you rent a hall you guys are good church people and your church is bigger than Messiah you should have it at their place and they looked at me like they'd never heard that before and they said well I don't think we let that happen at our church and we want you to see this building as your building because you know what this building is your building <laughs> We want you to see it as an extension of your house and to, and to, and to use it and to take care of it like that. And, and in fact, the, the even crazier thing is that we let everyone else use this building too. Uh, out, so all sorts of outside groups use this building from, uh, uh, from fellowship groups and, and, and charity groups to moms groups and scrapbooking groups and the scouts that I mentioned to all sorts of fundraisers. We had big fundraisers for Ronald McDonald House and for Twigs last year. They were out of this place in the Reynoldsburg community. Uh, we have an open door policy for groups as long as they are not making money here, right? And it's not a private party. Uh, we save the private parties for us. That's our perk for us inside, right? And they treat it well. And they can get on the calendar, which is getting harder and harder to do. We see this building as our gift, but like all gifts that God gives us, we're called to share that gift with God's world. And that comes from you. That comes from your, your, your commitment to that. And what it does is it communicates to the rest of the community that we are people that care about what's happening outside these doors. And so you should hear my phone ring. I mean, when, when Reynoldsburg needed a new food pantry, they called Messiah to ask if we could be part of starting that because they knew Messiah would have a heart for that. When, uh, when the community started uh, a, a new ministry last year for homeless, they called Messiah to see if we could be part of that because they knew we'd have a heart for that. When the furnace broke at First English Lutheran Church a few years ago, they called Messiah because they thought Messiah would have a heart for that. Uh, when you put offering in that offering plate, we take thousands of dollars out of that and we give it to Joseph's coat so people have clothes that are in need, uh, furniture for apartments that are empty. Uh, we spent over $10,000, or we raised over $10,000 for the Heart Food Pantry from you people. Uh, we spent over $5,000 to feed all these shelters that we talked about. And, and that's the outside stuff we're doing. We, uh, our call is to love God and to love each other, and, and, and we work hard at loving and taking care of each other too. I mean, 
there aren't fairies that come and, and put that communion out, right? I mean, you know that, right? I mean, you know that, that there's volunteers that come in on Saturday morning and, and get all that ready and, and, and prepare for that. And these, and these uh, bell people that are going to play for you in a minute, they, they don't just look at the music this morning. I mean, you know, they, they're here on Monday night practicing. The chance choir's here on Thursday night practicing, and they gave a gift at 8 o'clock. I mean, those are people that are busy, and they sacrifice their time in order to give you a, a good worship experience. Our, our walls are painted, our gardens are taken care of, all by volunteers. We've got Sunday school teachers and Wednesday night teachers and, and confirmation leaders and high school leaders and all those people are serving us just as we're called to serve them. And, and we get that. And that. That's what makes this place uh, a special place. It's rich. It's rich. It's rich with people that, that, that enjoy worship, worship of God, who calls us to worship not as an opportunity, but as an obligation for our love. It's, it's rich with people uh, that, that are committed to, to sharing the, the time that they have and the talents that they've been given. It's rich with people that are sharing their riches, right? I have to tell my uh, Southern Ohio Synod friends that I don't pastor a wealthy congregation because because they think I do. They, they think you guys are all surgeons and, uh, and own limited and everything else out here because, you know, they've gone on the parochial report and, and they've seen that um, in 2003 we gave $300,000 for all the ministry that Messiah was about, which is a good chunk of change, $300,000, right? I mean, you pay me, you know, about half that. My math is off, but yeah, but it's a good chunk of change. So, but in 2014, right, this last year that we just had, you people gave $470,000 towards the ministries of this church. The, minis the, the ministries of keeping the lights on and paying staff and, 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 and giving towards these, uh, these ministries that I've been talking about to make sure they happen, $470,000. You actually gave more than we budgeted uh, towards the ministries of this church, right? Not too many churches can say that. But that's only part of the story. You gave $108,000 towards the mortgage to pay for that kitchen that is used so much in that fellowship hall uh, that, that is keeping Cub Scouts warm. $108,000 you gave towards that. Uh, people gave on average like $35 a week for, that, uh, for the ministries and, and $40 a month for, that, um, for the mortgage. Isn't that cool how us just giving $40 a month can could come out to $108,000, how, how, how numbers work like that. And, and that's not even all. You people pledged $180,000 now uh, towards the renovation of this space last year. So for 2003, where we, spent three, where we had $300,000 given towards ministry to this last year, where I think my number's right, $670,000. That's, that's great. That's great. It, it's Commitment Sunday, and I'm supposed to beat you people up, you know? <laughs> Come on! What are you thinking? Don't you love Jesus? I, I can't do it. You guys are doing great. Just do more of the same, you know? Do more of the same. Can some of you be more generous? Yeah. Some of you could be more generous. You know? Have fun with this. You, are, you have a great opportunity to love God and love God's world by sacrificing and serving. Take advantage of that. It's, it, it's fun. It's fun. If you, have, if you can give a little more this year, then give a little more because you should be confident that if you do, we will find more ministry to do with that because there is a lot more ministry out here to do. You know, if we all just gave $10 more a week, we would have over $150,000 of unbudgeted money at the end of the year where we would just have to, like, have a congregational meeting and go, I don't know what to do. <laughs> what, 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 what do you think needs to be done out there that, that we could be doing with this money? Wouldn't that be the greatest meeting in the world? Uh, if you have not been part of giving before, you know, it doesn't take a lot. It, just, just make a, a small commitment this year because there's something about having that kind of ownership and buy-in that, 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 you know, when you hear those songs sung and, 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 and know that people are fed and, and, and children are learning, that you're a part of that. I mean, you know, we have, we have members who are great at serving and great at worshiping, 
but that's a part of their life that, that isn't great yet. What, what are you waiting for? Just put a little number on that card, you know? And, and, and then see how good it feels to keep that promise that, that you make. If you have trouble remembering or getting to worship, do what Paige and I did. We signed up for online giving at our website a few years ago. Now it just comes right out of our uh, account, and, uh, and, and, and we don't have those kind of worries at all. At the end of the day, celebrate and enjoy where God has called you to worship and be part of. Because we are being a light of Christ in this world. Could we be a brighter light? Yeah. But we're being a faithful light. And that's good news. So this is not a day, you know, where any of us should have anything but a smile on our face. This is the day where we've been given the chance to continue the good ministry that we've been called to do. And I'm honored to continue that with you. So let your light shine. In fact, that's the song we're going to play for a while. Uh, so if, if, if you brought commitment cards from home, you're going to bring them forward and put them in this tiny little table in this tiny little basket right here. This is, it's small. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if you didn't come ready for that um, and you want to make a commitment, there's commitment cards in your pews. You could take one of those. Ernie's got a, 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 a little part of this song that she's going to play beforehand, and then we're all going to stand and sing this together. stand and open up our hymnals and let's sing this song together.
called us to be God's people, God's light in this world. Let us pray now for the church and for everyone in need. Holy God, help us bear your light in this world. Turn each and every heart to be passionate towards you and towards your creation. Bless this church, Lord, in the year ahead so that we can be about ministry that blesses your creation. May we be your light and let it shine in the world. And let us sing. of creation there is so much darkness and brokenness in this world that your light is needed now more than ever we pray for leaders that will let light shine on nations that are hungry on places that are at war and people are displaced where disease is ravaging and hurting those and here in this community where so many are in need right now let us sing Light shine for all those that need healing this week, especially those in our church. We pray for Keith Reinhardt and Kimberly Berry, Marlon Sapi and Meg Reidler, Mike Reed, Scott Manns, Shelly Seifert, Nancy Levering, Tish and Bill Mead, Kathleen Botley and Ethel Cochran, and others named aloud now. each and every one of them have a face of Christ, a light of Christ, warm them and assure them of your peace right now, Lord, when they need it. And let us sing. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Greeting one another with God's peace, the brothers and sisters you've been called to share our life with. have good gifts to share uh, from the bell choir and the gifts that you brought to share with God's world this morning.
stand and sing as we receive these good gifts. Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat are scattered upon the hills and then gathered to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of all life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for the Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh, who is the light that has come into all of our world. For in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's been given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he blessed, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant that's shed in my blood, for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As the people of God, we gather and we proclaim the very mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Remember our new birth and his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming again. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us and awaken your people, filling us with your light and bringing us gifts of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours. Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please, let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the table that God has set. Amen. You may be seated. We'll commune our assistance, and then we'll bring this meal down for everyone to eat.
understand. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Everlasting God, we bless you that you have brought us to this mountaintop and fed us with the life and the light of your Son. Send us in his name now from this place to bring light into dark corners, healing where lives are torn, and nourishment to every hungry heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I, do, I did make a list here. What did I do with it? Of things that are going on. Tons of things going on. I don't know where it is. The, um, t uh, tomorrow, we got a senior luncheon happening. So uh, come for that. Uh, soup and sandwiches. Good fellowship. In our fellowship hall, noon, noon time, I believe. Uh, Wednesday, I can tell you about a class I've been teaching. Since, uh, since I got the floor, I can do that. Uh, come Wednesday night at 6.30. We're... We're, uh, we're teaching this class how Lutherans understand scripture. You don't need to have gone to the other ones. You can enjoy this one. Uh, we are doing um, how we make moral decisions based on scripture. That's the topic this week. We had great turnout for that class, so I lift that up. Um, sign up for uh, the Valentine's Day dinner. Uh, Mike, only people who are in love are invited, right? All right. So if you love somebody, then come to that. If you don't love anybody, then stay home. <laughs> so I, I think most people are invited then for that. So come at the Valentine dinner. There's a sign-up sheet for that out there. There's people out there collecting uh, computer stuff all across the city. They're doing that in our parking lot today. Uh, take part in that. We are making Valentine's bags for our heart clients. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can buy at our, mar at our marketplace for that downstairs when you leave. Uh, those are, we're getting a bag for every one of our clients. We're doing that with our 13 other churches in the area, so that's kind of cool. Uh, we made your giving statements for last year. We will mail those out tomorrow, but you will save us, uh, I don't know, what, whatever the United Post Office is now, $25 a letter or something like that. If you pick up your letter before you leave, so that's down there in the fellowship hall or in the welcome center over on that side, and that, that's a lot. There's a lot going on. Take take advantage of um, of the good gift uh, that God's calling you to give. Why don't we bow your head for a blessing? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Our final hymn is hymn 668, 668 in your hymnal, not 688, 668 in your hymnal.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.